Okay, welcome back. Lesson 27. Lesson 27, like lesson 26, the last example of lesson 26 is fairly intense, but uh, pretty important uh, for higher level thinking in physics. So once again, there's nothing um, like this on your assignment, but it's probably good to just watch it um, just to see how cool physics can get in terms of its relationship to mathematics. Okay, what do we have here? We have a a box on a slope of 30 degrees, 15 kilogram box, um, and it says determine the acceleration of the box at the coefficient of friction. So obviously the box is going down the slope and determine its uh, acceleration given the coefficient of friction. So uh, first let's draw a sketch and then we'll do a free body diagram. Thirty degrees. There's the box. It is fifteen kilograms. Okay, and it's going down the slope. Okay, so let's ask ourselves what forces are acting on this box. Well, obviously our favorite gravity going straight down. In this example, the normal force, the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. So it's not opposite the force of gravity, it is actually this way. That's the normal force. Fn, the normal force, so it's perpendicular to the surface. Uh, what other forces are acting in this, in this case? We've got the force of friction. Is it going up slope or down slope? It's going up the slope because the box is obviously accelerating down the slope. So this is going to be the force of friction. Okay, so there are three forces acting on this. Is there an applied force? Now, that's the next question you can ask yourself. What's the applied force? I'm not pushing the box. It's just accelerating down the slope. Why is it accelerating down the slope? Because it's on a slope, right? And there's not enough friction to keep it stationary, so it's accelerating down the slope. So you, you have to ask yourself, what force is that? Well, it's part of gravity. Just like in the last example that we did in lesson 26, uh, you had the y component, you had an x component and a y component of the applied force. Gravity in this case also has an x and a y component. And um, how do we, uh, so how do we depict that? We depict that as follows. So if this is gravity going straight down, it has a perpendicular component, and this perpendicular component, the symbol here, the it looks like an upside down T, is, means perpendicular. The perpendicular co component is equal and opposite to the, uh, the normal force. And then it has this. This is called the force of gravity parallel. And then I'm just going to go change here. I'm just going to put the force of gravity over here. There we go. This is called the force of gravity when you have two lines, looks like the number 11, but it's not number 11. It means two lines that are parallel. The force of gravity parallel, and it is this one here, the force of gravity parallel that is making the object go down the slope. So that's the force that's causing it to move. Now, obviously, the force of gravity is, um, is going to be m times uh, 9.81. So the force of gravity parallel is going to be much smaller than that, especially this is only a 30 degree slope. So the force of gravity parallel, the force that's actually pulling it down the slope, is going to be uh, much less than the normal force of gravity. Okay, so first of all, let's go through, uh, let's go in steps again. The first thing we're going to do is find out what Fg is. Why do you want to do that? Because we need it right here. Fg is then g n is 15, uh, negative 9.81. Obviously, the negative is irrelevant, just means it's not irrelevant, but it just means the direction is going down. And so the force, we're just gonna, I'm just going to write this positive now. The force of gravity is 147.15 newtons. All right, that is this value right here. Now, Let's, uh, actually I should have done this before, but let's go back and let's write a net force statement for this problem. Back over here. The net force, oh, the net force is going to equal 
So we're talking about the object moving. It's moving down the slope. What's making it move down the slope? This guy right here. I'm going to actually put it over here now. I call this the force of gravity parallel. The force of gravity parallel is the force that's making it move down the slope. So the force of gravity parallel plus, and what's opposite to that? The force of friction. Okay? And the force of friction is we're going to find the force of friction similar uh, to how we found the force of friction in lesson 26. It's actually not as complicated as that one, but um, same idea. So let's find the force of uh, gravity parallel first. And to do that, as always, we're going to have to step two is break everything into components. 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 Here we are. So what are we breaking into components? We're breaking the force of gravity into components. So we have the force of gravity here, which we already know is 147.15. We have the force of gravity perpendicular. And we have the force of gravity parallel. This is our 90 degrees, right? And we need an angle. Well, we have this angle here. What is that angle there? It's 30 degrees. Oh, I'm going to give you a 30 degrees. And of course, you're going to say, well, why is that 30 degrees? Well, it's just a little geometry. I'll just explain to you why that is 30 degrees. What we're trying to say here is whatever this value is here will also be this value in here. They're always equal. Why, 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 you ask? Let me just prove that to you very quickly. If I take a triangle, a big, big triangle, and I say that this is 30 degrees. Here's my force of gravity going down that way. This is 90 degrees, obviously. So here's my normal force, and here's my force perpendicular. My perpendicular force, there's my force of gravity parallel. And as you can see, if this is 30 and this is 90, then this up here must be. 60 to make 180 degrees for a triangle. Correct? Now this here, these are all, this is 90 degrees, 90 degrees, um, 90 degrees in here. If that's 90 degrees, and this, I'll do this in blue, this here is 90 degrees, then what's this angle in here? If this is 60, this must be 30. Okay, so that's a geometric proof of why this angle here will always equal that angle there. If that angle there is 60, this will equal 60. If it's 45, that will equal 45, and so on. Okay, now we can separate, we can solve for FG perpendicular, FG parallel. Let's do, just do FG perpendicular first. FG perpendicular is going to be, so what is it going to be? Um... Uh, this is 30 degrees, this is going to be the opposite, and this is the hypotenuse, so it's going to be the sine function. So we're going to say that the sine of 30 degrees equals, here's my angle up here, the opposite is the parallel, and the hypotenuse is 147.15, and therefore, FG parallel, the force of gravity parallel to the uh, slope, in other words, the force is making it move down the slope is going to be sine 30 times 147.15. Oops, sorry. And that turns out to be 73.575 newtons. Okay, so 70, essentially 74 newtons is making it move down the slope. Uh, we're also going to solve for the FG perpendicular. It's going to be over here, FG perpendicular. And that turns out to be the cosine. Cosine of 30 degrees equals FG perpendicular over 147. And it turns out to be, so FG perpendicular, the perpendicular force turns out to be 127.436 newtons. 
All right, and now why do we need that? Why do we need the FG perpendicular? For the same reason that we did in the previous lesson, we need to find, okay, so let's back up the truck here a little bit. What have we done? What have we achieved so far? We've achieved this value here, which is right here. Oops, yeah. Okay, so we got that. We need to find this one, force of friction. What do we have for the force of friction? That's step two. Now we go to step two. So step three. Step two will be find the force of friction. Three, FF. And we know that FF equals mu FN. Mu is given to us 0 0.15. Fn in this case is easier than the previous example, right? Because the box is not uh, pushing down into the slope in the same way that when you push a box uh, against the floor and it's going horizontal. That's quite different. And so the Fn we've already calculated. It's the opposite of Fg perpendicular. Let's go to our diagram right here. Here you can see it right here. Here is, oh, that's not the original diagram. Here's Fn, here's Fg perpendicular, and equal and opposite. So the Fn we've already calculated, it's, it's, it's right here, 1, 2, 7, 1, 4, 6, and that gives us frictional force of 19.115 newtons. We're almost there. And now that we've got the frictional force, we can go back and add it here into what we were initially trying to find. So let's go down to step four. F net equals FG parallel plus FF. FG parallel, 73.575. The friction force negative opposite direction, giving us a net force of 54.460 newtons. And the last step, amen, is to calculate the acceleration. We've got the net force. We've got the mass. Uh, what's the mass? The mass is 15. And all of that yields the very simple answer of 3.6 meters per second squared. So that is, that's a beautiful physics problem. And uh, yeah, I hope you got it. Now you can watch this video over and over again, all 13 glorious minutes of it. All right, bye for now.